I want to give a larger than usual preface here that this video contains spoilers of several films. If you have not seen these, you may not wish to see this video, or you can skip the appropriate sections. A friend of mine recently asked me what video I was working on next. When I told her that I was going to make a video on hylophobia, she didn't understand how anyone could be frightened by a forest. So I asked her, have you ever been in the woods at night? She replied, yes. Did you ever take a flashlight and point it into the forest? She said, no. Well, why not? She replied, just in case I see a pair of eyes staring back at me. Hylophobia is the fear of trees or forests. There are a surprising number of modern films that incorporate hylophobia into their plot or setting, but so too is its prevalence in literature, mythology, and human history. So what is it about forests that seems to frighten us to our core? Everyone has probably heard the tale of Hansel and Gretel, written in 1812, in which two children are abandoned in the woods. It's not long before they find the home of a witch, deep in the bowels of the forest. A story you may not have heard of is Vasilisa the Beautiful, an 18th century Slavic fairy tale about a young woman who loses her way in the woods, only to encounter Baba Yaga, a cannibalistic witch common to many fairy tales. In every story, Baba Yaga resides deep in the forest, preying on those who get lost. Forests were home to many folklore witches in Eastern Europe, with every region housing their own version of Baba Yaga. The First Nation tribes of the Pacific Northwest tell the story of Tsunakwa, a supernatural creature that eats children. She was often used by elders as a ploy to scare children in order to prevent them from wandering into the forest alone. She's also known as Tsunakwa, Sanak, and by some tribes, Sasquatch. Yes, the legend of Sasquatch and Tsunakwa are in fact the same. I bet you didn't know that Sasquatch is a woman. Then there is the story of the Headless Horseman, a figure with origins in 5th century Europe. He resides in forests and preys on those who cross his path. This is a story that has seen many adaptations throughout history. Perhaps the most famous story of all is that of Little Red Riding Hood. In grislier versions of the tale, the wolf feeds her own grandmother to her. The tale was pervasive in Europe for centuries, dating back as far as the 10th century in France. Some researchers believe that the story's origins most likely date back to the 1st century in China, where the ubiquitously recognizable wolf replaced the lion. The common theme in all these stories is don't go into the woods. But what is so inherently frightening about the woods? In order to find out, I thought I'd go see for myself. So personally, I've spent my whole uh, whole life in forests, so what I thought I'd do for the purposes of this video is just go for a hike, show you guys that there's really nothing to be afraid of in forests. In forests, dense trees obscure your vision and hearing, and prevent you from seeing approaching predators such as witches or wolves until it's too late. Additionally, trees tend to look alike, and without any other nearby references, it's easy to get turned around and find yourself entirely lost. Of course, nowadays these fears can be eased. We can use flashlights to illuminate the most dimly lit places, and if we get lost, we can use established maps, compasses, or GPS devices. Despite our ability to rationally solve the threats presented by entering a forest, it may do little to solve the irrational fear, which is the very definition of a phobia. I don't see how anyone could possibly find forest to be scary. I mean, it's just so gorgeous out here. I've spent my whole life in forests, and I just can't seem to really get over just how beautiful it is out here. I don't see how anyone could possibly find it scary. But, you know, some people. Evolutionary psychologists have hypothesized that there is a very good reason as to why most people dislike being near spiders or snakes, even around species that aren't aggressive, poisonous, or otherwise harmful. The reason is that because some snakes and spiders are poisonous and can cause grave injury or death, it's considered an adaptive behavior to be fearful of all snakes and spiders. Sure, the fear may cause you to be unnecessarily afraid of the garter snake in your backyard or the daddy long leg spider in your house, but it may also save you if you cross paths with a cobra or a black widow spider. Evolutionary psychologists call this an evolved psychological mechanism, wherein a physiological threat leads to an adaptive behavior, thereby increasing the chances of survival. So considering the number of physiological threats that are present in forests, it's no surprise that hylophobia affects some acutely, and for the rest of us there is a nagging instinct or evolved psychological mechanism to be on edge when entering a forest. In recent years, this nagging instinct has been masterfully exploited by modern films. You're probably most familiar with the forest that sits just outside of Hogwarts. The forest? We can't go in there. Students aren't allowed. And there are werewolves. 
Oh, there's more than werewolves in those trees, lad. Right? You can be sure of that. Ninety-nine. The Forbidden Forest is dark, filled with dangerous creatures, and is off-limits to students. It is a place of fear. Similarly, Middle-earth has many forests, and each offered obstacles and ominous threats to the protagonists. The horror genre has especially benefited from hylophobia in recent years. I've already discussed Okagahara in another video, but today I'd like to talk about four films that exploit hylophobia in different ways. The first is more or less an honorable mention. I don't think it's a coincidence that the climax and the most horrific scene of Under the Skin takes place in a forest. This actually reminds me of another time an alien was found in the woods. Please, don't hurt me. Don't be afraid. Yeah! The second film of significance is The Witch. So yeah, I've been watching tons of videos lately about hylophobia and it's uh, it's really fascinating stuff. I really enjoyed The Witch actually, which uh, one, of, uh, one of you guys actually recommended to me. And uh, oh, what the fuck? Give me what I want, or you never divided by leave. Fucking kids in the garbage. Anyways, so but anyways, back to uh, The Witch. In The Witch, a family of settlers built a new home near an uncharted forest, only to be set upon by the forces of evil that live there. There are several themes in The Witch, but the first we learn is that the characters themselves are afraid of the forest, and only venture into it out of necessity when their crops fail. The very presence of the forest adds tension to the film. In fact, the way it was shot seems to suggest that the forest itself is responsible for the disappearance of the family's baby. Any time they enter it, a new calamity besets them. It's not long before Caleb, the eldest son, becomes hopelessly lost in the forest, not only in the physical sense but in the spiritual. He's tempted by his corrupt nature, empty of grace, bent on sin. His sin is boo. Sin is boobies! He loves the boobies! Give me them tatas! Why don't you just get in there and motor like... Needless to say, the witch takes full advantage of his lapse in judgment. At the end of the film, Thomason accepts the freedom of sin and witchcraft, enters the woods, and attends a witch's sabbath. This is a meeting of those who practice witchcraft, worship the devil, and shocker, it always takes place in the woods. The dangers of the witch's sabbath have been preached for centuries, and indeed, many were killed simply by being accused of attending such a meeting. So in the witch there are many elements consistent with hylophobia and the real dangers forests present. Another movie I watched actually pretty recently was the, the Blair Witch Project. I mean, some people could say that it was, uh... Hello? Anyway, some, some people think that The Blair Witch is a little bit boring, but personally, I don't think so. I think it was really quite subtle in, uh, in the way it was done. The Blair Witch Project is a classic film, and for better or worse, more or less started a new genre of found footage horror. Fuck you, paranormal activity! As I mentioned, the bedrock of this movie is its subtlety. The snapping of a twig is enough to put the viewer on edge. And again we see elements of hylophobia being exploited to their fullest. The characters quickly get lost, and though they know they're being hunted by an unseen threat, the darkness of the forest, combined with the difficulty in figuring out where the source of noise is actually coming from, causes them to be completely helpless to the mounting danger. Just deer. It could be deer, I guess. I don't fucking think it's deer though, man. It sounds exactly like a shit last night. It's on all sides of us. Guys look just like a deer. It was a deer, man. I like think it was a it fucking... wasn't like last night. Jesus Christ, what the fuck is that? Fuck! <laughs> It's a film that embodies hylophobia by presenting rational dangers in an irrational circumstance. It's starting to get uh, a little late, and the thing actually ready to head home myself and uh hello hello what the hell okay i'm kind of starting to get a little bit a little bit freaked out here. I think I'm gonna start heading back. The last film I want to mention is Antichrist, in which one of the main characters is actually hylophobic, or at least claims to be. What are you afraid of? 
Maybe it would be easier for you to tell me where you're afraid. Where would you feel most exposed? Would be the worst place. The woods. Antichrist is filled with disturbing images and scenes, showing force to be a place of rot, chaos, and death. Its disorder unhinged. Chaos reigns. It's perhaps a different kind of fear than that used in The Witch or The Blair Witch Project, but not altogether unfamiliar either. The previous two films explore themes of corruption, but Antichrist is the only one of the three that dares to look directly into the void. Really, it's the ultimate fear, one that Hylophobia never really did. What do you want from me? He referred to my hands. If they're small, something else must be small. I guarantee you there's no problem. I guarantee you. Despite our ability to rationalize the dangers present in forests, the irrational, instinctual mind, the one that functions on evolved psychological mechanisms, will always be vulnerable to a clever filmmaker. So that leaves just one question. Are you afraid of forests? Thanks for watching. I want to give a big thank you to Mike who played the forest ghoul and let me know what you guys thought of this kind of content and if you'd like to see it from me in the future. Until next time, this has been the Film Herald. Wait, what? <laughs> <laughs>